Okay, well, I just wanted to do a, a quick introduction. Um, you all, well, Becky doesn't need an introduction. Becky Alexander, she teaches technology even in our in our college for our elementary and special ed folks, and we wish she would teach it for, I wish she would teach it for secondary folks as well. But she has graciously agreed to, um, to teach us about um, G Suite, Google Suites, focusing on forms, but she's going to actually introduce us to um, five different applications, and she's going to teach us things we don't even know about forms, if you know about forms already, so I'm excited about that. And then she's going to give you playtime, so you can focus on forms or any of the other things. So, um, and I am here to support her. I am not the um, expert, but I told her I would, if you guys need help, I would do my best. Yeah. So thank you. Okay. okay. Thank you very much. All right. Thanks for coming. Uh, we're just going to jump right in. I'm uh, going to talk to you again, as Nancy said, about the G Suite uh, and all of the Google applications. But first, everyone has put the URL address in, and so what that is, is that's access to this slideshow. You can use it in presentation mode, but what I think that you'll find most helpful when you leave here is if you uh, pull it up, you can look at the speaker notes, and for example, if you pull this out, you can see the speaker notes on the side and I really like to go through sites and get all of the information so I've given you directions how to go to each of these applications so you may forget you may want to go back through and you'll have this presentation that you can download and utilize also I want you to know that you can uh, util uh, look at this presentation on your iPad as well. So it's not like Nearpod in that I control everything. You can go through it in your own speed, but I just want you to know that all of these applications we're gonna create on the computer, but you can uh, access them and look at them and view them on the iPad. You can create on the iPad some of them, but it's really difficult. So most of the time I just create on the computer and then view on uh, some of the other devices as well as your phone. All right, so we're going to go ahead and look at uh, standards first. Uh, how many of you guys are familiar with the ISTE standards for educators? All right, so that's my professional organization that I, uh, these are the most current ones, uh, 2017. And what I particularly like about uh, these standards is, if you notice, all of the items that are underlined are the vocabulary of their terms. Uh, if I roll my mouse over, it gives me that academic language of those definitions. So a lot of times I don't know what they're referring to or if I have any question. And so again, there are 2017 ISTE standards for educators as well as students. So, Becky, what does IST stand for? International Society for Teacher Education. So I've followed these for years. They've been around forever. Um, they also have one for administrators as well as coaches, but these are the two that I focus on the most because I want to see what's current, what's out there, what the expectations are for my students and they give you those particular categories and most of the time when I'm creating my classes I will look at all of these main categories and I will create my modules based on those categories so it gives me that framework I look at the indicators that my students need or I need as um, a, an educator or obviously our teacher candidates and then I try to find activities or strategies that I can use so that's that's kind of where I start everything with. All right, let's move on uh, to the Google Suite. All right, uh, the Google Suite or Google applications uh, have more than what I've got up there, but this is just a few. The Gmail, Google Drive, Google Sites, that's the Chrome, uh, Sheets, Slides, and Docs. So we're gonna just look in particular at a few specifics. So I'm just gonna move on the first one is Google Translate. So we're just going to do this together. So everyone, let me, let me back up and go to my drive. Sometimes I'll, and you guys just stop me uh, when you need to. But this is my Google Drive. And of course, I can. it looks kind of like an email area, but I can create my folders. I can put all of my documents in there. And I would advise start by creating uh, your folders there. Okay. Okay. All right. Let's. Uh, okay. So we've got our presentation open. 
Now open up another tab. Go ahead and open up another tab. You're going to keep your Google presentation open, but then see how I've got all of these tabs at the top. All right, now go ahead and type in your Google uh, account. Just let's have it over another tab. And you may already be in it, and if you are, you will know by looking and seeing that you have this grid over here and possibly your image or your photo of yourself. So we've got, okay, so now open up another tab mm -hmm. and then just type in Gmail or Google so you can sign in. Okay, Cheryl's in there. I don't think I'm in there, right? Okay, and if you have Google Chrome, uh, that's the, the recommended browser. You there? Yep. Yeah, okay. You got it? Okay, very good. All right. So Nancy, just tell me when I'm, okay, Chris. Oh yeah, you're good, all right. Uh, so I start out again, I'm not gonna go through everything, it's almost too much. So I selected just five applications, but this is where you would go uh, in the Google Drive and you see where my finger is pointed. Uh, that's our grid or our waffle. And so let's go ahead and just click on the grid or the waffle. Most of you guys have already done that and you'll see a list of all of the different applications uh, that you can utilize. And of course, these are free in uh, the Google Suite. If I click on more, it just gives me more applications. Obviously, it's a whole lot of them. Uh, the main feature that Google really uh, spouts as being one of their their calling cards as far as being unique to them is the collaborative features. So where maybe Microsoft has uh, some more bells and whistles, uh, Google has always been and has been for a really long time utilizing the collaborative features within all of their applications. So anything we do today, we can give access to any of you guys and we can work on any document together, whether it be in forms, uh, slides, sheets, and so that's what really makes it uh, very unique for our students and for us as teams working on areas. So, Vicki, you're saying that if I have like a, an article that I'm writing, let's say Zach and I are collaborating, we can have that in, in um, Google Docs and we can both be working on that and it'll save as, as even though we're both working on it. It automatically saves and he can see what you've actually done and uh, and then what pops up is a little icon when you're typing so that I can actually see what you're doing and what you've added. I actually have a revision within all of these applications that I can go back and look and say, okay, what, what did we add? Uh, so it's really full blown, really nice. It really stops the emails going back and forth. We all just log in, we go to that document and we work on it when we can. All right, so now you're looking at all of the applications here. And so now click on, on the left-hand side where it says new. And that's where we're going. We're going to uh, click on where we see Google Docs. Go ahead and click Google Docs. All right, and so this looks very much like Microsoft Word items that we're uh, used to. But what I'm going to show you today is Google Translate. Uh, Translate's been around, or Translator's been around for a really long time, probably about 10 years, but in the past year uh, it has been uh, improved upon. A lot of times when they did the translation it really didn't come across very well, but now I think they're using our artificial intelligence and phrases, and so the uh, translation is better. So go ahead and type in a sentence. Now, if you have a document you want to pull in, uh, you can pull in a document, and, but right now we're just going to type in um, a sentence in, in English. All right, and then under tools and again if I go a little bit too fast on your speaker notes and on your handouts you have all this information so you can go right back in and do that so I'm going to click on translate document 
and then it gives me a choice. What am I going to translate the document into? And so go ahead and uh, make your choice. If you're familiar with a particular language, then you may can. Spanish. Okay, Spanish here, all right. Because I'm thinking about our, our, um, our teacher candidates and, and they're, creating, uh, they're creating documents that not, might need to be um, shared with English language learners. I mean, okay. can be on Spanish, obviously. But. So here uh, you have it's translated into Spanish. And then if I wanted to open up a document that I already had, that was pretty full blown, I can translate that whole document immediately by just using that tool. Can we take documents that are in a foreign language and translate them into English? Yes, it can go back the other way. Mm -hmm. So it's, uh, again, we're already as educators thinking of those uh, different applications and I think there's a whole lot of them, but I won't go there because that'll suck up our time. All right, also I noticed uh, during the tools section, voice typing, uh, that's really kind of nice for students who maybe aren't so uh, proficient in typing. You can just voice type and it will um, type it for you. All right, so we're gonna move on. Uh, we're going to, uh, let's see, let's go back out. We're gonna, if I'm kind of going back into my tab that had the Google Drive open, just so we can kind of get to the same place again and I'm going to go to new and this particular time I'm going to uh, let's see let's go to more and let's go to Google Drawings I think Google Drawings is one that a lot of times we forget is there and obviously you can do all kinds of drawings and shapes and colors and so forth but uh, it's also good for creating Venn diagrams and I'm just gonna let you guys go ahead and insert and play and draw just for a few minutes. And then I'm going to pull up some examples that I have in my drive of Google Drawing so that you can see what I have done and what others have done. So again, I could use it as an evaluation chart. There's lots of templates. Is there like a concept map template? Oh, there's a mm -hmm. fire model. Mm -hmm. Okay, now that this is, I have this, uh, these examples. Oh, you can, shoot, you can look for them online. You can look for them online. So you can actually draw them. Yeah, you can actually, and these are all done with drawings. Then you, it, of course, makes it individualized and it can be collaborative. And I want to stop for just a minute and go back to my Google Translate. I forgot to mention. Uh, the address on Google Translate on your uh, presentation or on your pages here. You can go to that particular site and you don't have to be in Google and then you can type in your website and it will translate any of the websites that you're viewing. So that's just a little bit helpful. But yes, uh, you can see here some of the, the different templates. Where'd you go to to find those templates? Okay, I've given you on your, uh, on your presentation, if you'll look, Cheryl, at this, I've got a Google shortener, a Google address, and you can look at some of those samples. Or like Nancy said, you can just Google templates and put them in there into your drawing. And again, what I have my students do is a lot of times they're working on a PBL project and then I'm asking them to go in and draw and collaborate and you yeah mm -hmm. well Terry Gooden can tell us how we need to oh, use it <laughs> yes okay and that's Google drawing all right Google slides all right let me go back in you want them to create anyone? yeah let's go to new and go ahead and Open up new, and then you'll scroll down to where you see Google Slides. And then go ahead and choose a blank presentation. And we're just... Um, so this is like PowerPoint, but it's the Google form of it. It is, and up in the upper right-hand side where it says share, that is where you will 
always go. You see it has a little lock on it, but if I wanted to share it with someone, obviously I could. And then it gives me this box. I go into, I can say anyone with this link can view, which is what I've done with this Google presentation that you've got today. I'm not letting you edit it. I guess there's a way around it. Uh, you can go to advance and you can actually invite just particular people. So if you had all of their email addresses, you could put that in. Uh, what makes it really nice is all of this is kind of in the cloud. So most of the time, I just give my students links. They have links to all of my documents, presentations, any kind of rubrics. I do them in Google Docs. And what it does for me as an educator, it doesn't keep me so stagnant that I'm doing the same thing all the time because I can quickly change. The link stays the same. But for example, if I've got it, I'm going off track. So you Nancy got to keep. Uh, so if I have a Google document that say is specifications for assignment, maybe a rubric, a student comes and says, oh, I don't understand this, or this is very confusing. Well, I go right back in, I give more information, and I'm loving that um, kind of type A person that's really helped me because I can quickly change the specs. It goes up online really quick. I don't have to redo anything. It just syncs. And then the 20 other students hadn't even gone in there yet, and so I, I kind of, took care of the problem before it became a major one with 18 other students. So um, again, that's just kind of how I work. I usually have websites, and, I, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Okay, so the can neat I thing. Have a question about the PowerPoint? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. well, uh, can I take like an existing, existing PowerPoint and pick it up and drag it in here? Yes, yes, you can. You can, uh, let's see. It says import slides, and you can also download this as a PowerPoint. So it's always in a file, and then I can also download it, and you see all of the different formats that I can download uh, this particular presentation to. So if I want to take it into PowerPoint and say I don't have some of the features that I am really used to in PowerPoint, I can download it. But what I'm finding now is I'm years ago, maybe in a couple of years, I would always go back and forth with PowerPoint. I rarely use the Microsoft Office Suite. I'm all in the cloud now, and I feel very comfortable wherever I go on campus. I just have my account, I log in, I have all of my folders, I have all my specs, I have all of my information, and I just pu pull it up. It's, it's very comforting. And then the students really like it, again, that they can view it on their phone, they can pull it up on their iPads, or they can view it on their computer, and then they have access to it. And then, of course, they can collaborate with each other using any of these devices. Okay, but the cool thing that I was gonna show you, or something that I think could be uh, pretty beneficial is, uh, if you'll, and again, you're going to come back and play later. We're going to dive deep and create together a Google form. So I'm just giving you kind of some real quick looking at Google Slides. Uh, present over here, and you can do it in yours, but I'm just going to show it on mine. And if you'll just work with me on mine right now for a minute. So if I click the down arrow beside the word present, I click on presenter view. And what this does is I click Start New, and then what you will see is an address. Um, you can go ahead and copy that address and put it in another tab. So if you will, uh, you can either go to My Slides. No, I tell you what, just try to go ahead and copy that. If you can see it, or maybe Nancy and I will call it out, pull up another tab, because this is where you can ask questions within my presentation. So that's through all of Google Slides. So go ahead and uh, type that in on another tab. Do you want me to read it out loud? Yeah, why don't okay. you? That'd be great. Um, G -O -O dot G -L backslash the word slides. Yes, okay, after slides, backslash six, and then in lowercase, R, C, X, P, three. <clears throat> so goo, goo, goo.gl, forward slash, I'm sorry, thank you, forward slash, goo.gl, forward slash, slides, plural, forward slash, six, R, C, X, P, three. 
So now you can see that you can ask a question and you can do it with your particular Google account or you can check on anonymous if you feel like you don't want it's to. It's like a back channel. It is. Mm -hmm. But again, people can vote on the questions. So if I'm given a presentation, I can give this to them and then I can, I can hide it so that people won't see it. Then I can go look and say, okay, uh, I see that everybody voted that this was a particular question that was important to them. And then I can go out here and click on present. And then you'll see Terry Gooden, he has a question. Will you be available for future help? Uh, let me think. No. Uh, so, <laughs> always for you. So, it's really kind of neat because you can just go through, and a lot of people don't realize some of these features that are kind of hidden within uh, the Google Slides. So, that's kind of nice. Again, the sorting and questions. So, so, this can be done in a group like this where you have your slides and people can ask questions, and either you just you can see it or everyone can see it. That's correct. And then, could it also work for sending it out? the link to some of your students and at different times they're accessing it and they can type their questions in too? Absolutely, yes. And so then for me, uh, I can then elect when I come back into my classroom, you know, I, I could give everybody the link and I, I could just see how many questions we could go over that together, but then I could come back in like you said, if I've sent it out ahead of time. How do you keep students from one class separate from students of another class? Do they all have access to everything that you've got on there? Do you give permission to individual class members? It, it depends on my classes. So for example, some of my classes are similar. So they would have, okay, say for example, I teach a technology class on ground and online. The online is different than the on ground, but I have a website and I have online and on ground. The online people go to that particular site and the on ground goes to a different one. So the assignments are even different. Some of them are the same, some of them are different. And some of them do go to the same and some of them don't. It just depends on how I set it up. Did that make sense at all? Not really, I can tell. Well, if you have like, um, if you're teaching two different classes, do you have to have a website to do this? You don't. I just typically do sometimes, but you do not. You could straight up put a Google Doc up there and have a link to it. Or you could put it in your Google Slides. Yeah, I'm thinking what if one of my classes, I want them to have access to it, but when they access it, do they have access to all my other classes that might be on there? Oh, no. No, absolutely not. Okay. Because every form has its own unique URL. Yeah, exactly. Yes, and you can share uh, publicly or you can share it with just a link. So it's up to you as the designer how you want to share it. And a lot of times I will go either public or just share a, a link. Those are the two that I typically do. Uh, and I haven't had any problems been using it for years, but no, they cannot see any of my other folders, any of my other documents or any, yeah. So I'll show you how I've got mine set up a little bit later in the D2L. Yeah, Heather? Well, I do a ton of work collaboratively, and okay. so we use Dropbox all the time. And the great thing about that is you can organize things, you know, in folders. Yes. Is there a way to organize all these forms and things? Absolutely. You go into Google Drive, and, and where I've been using Google Drive for so many years, don't do as I, I have done in the past, uh, but I would like to say that I'm doing better. And so if you see through here, these are all my folders. So this is my LED 6630 digital class. Mm -hmm. And so again, if I open it up, then I have not very much. Uh, so do you make the folder, uh, is that shareable within the group you're collaborating? It is. You can actually make the folder or you can make uh, the documents just within the folder. It's up to you. And you can actually upload, and I don't know that I mentioned this, uh, you may be interested. If you see, I have file upload or folder upload. So I can upload, I've got enough space in this, this free version that my students can upload videos, any other files uh, that they want to, or you can upload. And so that's really helpful 
because uh, my students now are going out and they are taking uh, video of their students and doing some assessment work and so they're doing it on an e-portfolio but then they're uploading their videos to particular folders and linking uh, that to their e-portfolio. I'll show you some examples of that but yes so yes you just build folders and you can share the whole folder or individual. And what uh, classroom teachers typically do and which makes it really neat on the the Chromebooks is um, in other words, Zaf signed in using his particular Google account. I could give this to, he signs out, then I could give it to another student. They sign in with their Google account. It has all of their personal information. So that's why the Chromebooks have really caught on because they're cheaper, uh, they're mainly <laughs> cloud-based. Administration of it is really easy because no one has to push out and change. All of the things are on the cloud and they can be personalized to him or any other student. So what teachers are doing is, again, they have a Google Drive and they're building folders for each particular child and then the child is uploading their work to their particular folder and then you can go into the document and you can provide comments and feedback in real time or as quickly as they can then they just open up their folder and see your feedback so that's I would think would be pretty helpful uh, again it just we can just keep going on and on and on it just gets crazy all right um, Nancy how am I doing all right and uh, so we've already kind of done the Google Slides. So Google Sites. All right. So Google Sites is uh, Google's free website builder. And it's not as full of the features that they've had in the past, which is probably a good thing for students because it's much more professional looking and it's very easy to do. And so um, the students really like it. In my class, I have them build a website and they are pretending they're going to be a classroom teacher, where it be third grade or they may be in special ed, and they make it work for them. And I say nine pages. It has to have maybe a video, the curriculum standards, maybe your philosophy. And I'll just show you some quick examples, but I want you to know this is kind of out there. You could use it for your classes. Sometimes when I'm doing like a PBL or a project, I start going and creating a website and putting all of the specs and the information, give out the link to the group, and I say, here you go, um, because once again, after 20 minutes of talking, they, they've shut down on me. So I just go read it, and then we'll go back through it. So I'll show you a few of the sites that they have built, which I think um, this is an example. Uh, and this is called the new Google Sites. So you want to click on this in the applications where we went before, where it said more, and you can find this. This is Kate Supicon, and of course, this is her... Uh, website and she's got the navigation over here so here's her her resume yeah it okay so she's put it in a Google Doc she's just um, inserted it here's some of her lesson plan examples and she's uh, again I, I could download those lesson plans but this is just for me to see uh, this is her her growth correct Okay, so I'm going to just show you some different, this is, of course, different kind of navigation. And you can see they're pretty full blown. This is uh, getting them used to, um, you know, to transfer. And even though you learn a lot of the Google applications, you don't have to stay in the Google world to use them. In other words, we're going to go into Google Forms, and you could put Google Forms in an email and send it to someone. It doesn't have to be uh, within a Google, Google Sites or anything else. So here you've got a form. I think she, she did a parent questionnaire. So we talk about you know, what kind of forms, what kind of surveys, what kind of questions we need to ask, and so forth. So these are just a, a few examples. You can see what I really love is that they all look very different. And so, uh, again, they put their own kind of unique uh, look. And then I asked them to attach their uh, blog. And so he's created his blog. And if I click, I would go to that. But, um, and, it's, and it's really good. They do a good job with that. And the learning curve on creating these is? Uh, 
so easy you can't go wrong. I mean, it is just so easy. Uh, that's what's nice about the new Google Sites. They look pretty professional. You don't have to pay. I do tell them if you want to get your own particular domain for $10 a year so that when you get out of this class, instead of telling people dot google.sites.com and their name, uh, they could get something like um, nancy.com. You know, they can create, and then they would link it to this. And so that even gives it a, another level of professionalism where you're not having all of that, that long. And of course, you can go to Google Shortener. So these are just, again, uh, they always put a, a calendar, and we use the Google Calendar. And in fact, um, and it probably won't show up because it was, I'll have to go back into the, there we go. Um, this Google Calendar, in fact, Google Calendar just updated yesterday to a new and pretty one. I haven't checked all the features out, so this is an old one. But uh, what's going to be neat about the new Google Calendar is you can look and see if rooms are available. You can um, link in collaboratively and see who's available. Uh, it's, it's amazing. I just looked at a few of the features and I thought, okay, that's really nice. Okay, you can see I get really excited and I get, okay. But I, I really th I thought they did a good, good job. All right, Google Forms, Google Forms. All right, so we're going to go create a Google Form. So go back into your uh, Google Drive and go into New. Go into New. And then go into More, and you'll see the drop down. And then go into Google Forms. All right, we're going to create a form together. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to click up where it says Untitled Form and give it a, a, a title. All right, so we could, what I normally do with my students is I say, okay, what kind of form are we going to create? Because we create one together. And I say, okay, we're going to create one for students. Are we going to create one for parents? Well, since we're out of time, I'm just going to direct you uh, with this. So let's just type in Student Questionnaire. All right, and then if you uh, click down, it says form description. Uh, go ahead and say, please uh, read and respond to the following questions. All right, now you're going to click where it says Untitled Question, and you're going to type in what is your first name. <coughs> and then we're going to change the question type in a minute. So what is your first name? And provide a question mark there. And then over on the right-hand side, it may have defaulted to, sh I don't know what yours is. Okay, short answer? Okay, very good. Uh, now, again, you can provide some more clarifying how to answer this, but we're going to skip that and we're going to move on. It's always a good idea to make as many of your questions as separate because you want to think on the back end how you might sort the information when it goes into a spreadsheet later. So that's something to keep in mind. All right, so let's go ahead and we're going to add another question. Oh. First thing we've got to click down here where it says required. You want to make sure you move that button over. In other words, if you don't, they can skip that question and not answer it. So they can't go on unless they answer this question. All right, we're going to click on the plus sign over on the right hand side and we're going to say, what is your last name? Question mark. Uh, and, question, sorry. No. Um, I've, I've seen Google Forms being used as an observation instrument. How can how is that possible to like create your own Google form, have it on your iPad, walk into a classroom, call it classroom observation, and use radio buttons and have that information pulled to your sent to yourself? So you're not asking someone else to to pull that out, but you you want to use and uh, use it as an observation instrument. I've seen one person do that, but I, I couldn't figure out the logistics of how they sent it to themselves. Okay, all you would do is you would have that form filled out and then you would put it up on your iPad and I thought I had one available for me to look at. All right, so then I'm just filling it out as I'm doing the observation, as I'm doing the observation and then I can, uh, and then it'll just go into my spreadsheet and I will have the information okay. there. And then I would just sign in. I could sign in here and see it, but I could go back to my computer and sign in. Okay. 
and we're going to, okay, I don't know where mine went. Um, but yeah, I'll, I'll show you yeah. how that works. Okay. Let's see if I can, I may have picked up the wrong one. Okay. Oh well. Okay. So, um, okay, it defaulted to short answer. Make sure it's required. All right, uh, let's do another kind of question. Click on the plus. And you see how quickly it is. How many siblings do you have? Okay, and then um, let's go ahead and we're going to make this uh, maybe a multiple choice or no, a checkbox. Let's do checkbox. Okay, and you might put one and then you just fill in the checkboxes. Three, oop, three four, and then if they wanted to give us some more information, uh, we just say other. Remember to make it a required question. Obviously, you can uh, delete it, you can make a copy, and making the copy is really vital. When you do lots of forms and you want to take questions from others, uh, forms that you have or something, you just make a copy. And then if you notice, I can hold down my mouse and I can actually uh, see where these, uh, I can move my questions around. Um, so, mm -hmm. so I just hold it. Where's my last name? I'm gonna get it back up there because that was bugging me. Well, maybe I'm not going to. All right, so let's do uh, a couple of more questions. I'll, I'll worry about that later. All right. Um, and then you're going to, okay. Uh, so, for example, uh, let's go to plus. Um, what types of books do you like? Okay, what's my time? What time is this still? We have until 130. Okay, good, good, good. Okay. So they have a little playtime. Yes, absolutely. And then I can, okay, so what type of books? Uh, would you like to read this year? So I could do the check boxes again or I could do a multiple choice. I could do science fiction. If I could type. Oh, you could just leave it a short answer. I could. And uh, so I'm just, oh, I can spell. All right, so, no, I, I sure I can spell that myself. Okay. All right. Now what I would like to do is just so that um, if you look up here and then I'm going to let you guys go ahead and create your own questions, but I wanted to show you when we were over on the side, when we were in our Google Forms and we rolled over to the right hand side, you noticed there was an image uh, and so you can easily upload an image and you guys may or may not have some pictures on your computer so that's why we didn't do that so okay I might say that may help also I, I did a kind of fill in the blank so if I had some different kinds of curriculum that I wanted them to choose the correct answer I could use that kind of question and then uh, this is one what was your favorite class a short answer or, no, I think this was a paragraph, a paragraph one. Uh, this was an image where I did kind of a checkbox grid. So what I'd like for you to do now is, in your own disciplines, add about three more questions because what we want to get to is the fun of seeing where the data goes. So go ahead and um, ask three more questions, any questions, any question type, because even w when you're introducing this to students, 
Uh, we talk a lot about the different question types, what would be appropriate, and we learn more by when we do things inappropriate. <laughs> For example, we'll have a certain question and we'll choose a certain question type, and then we look and go, oh, this didn't give me the inf it wasn't set up quite right, or I, I needed to have used multiple choice instead of checkbox. Uh, so go ahead and play around, and it, like I said, get at least three questions. It looks like this tries to anticipate what kind of question you want, right? It does. It does. Yeah. They've just recently added that, but yes, it will. And just make sure that you put required. Um, this is typically what I do in most of my classes, and I try to say, okay, you've played, you've created, but the ultimate goal is for us to help our students create it. So when they're working on a unit, a project, anything, you say, okay, create a Google slide, create a website, create a questionnaire, go make a survey, go interview people, go. And so they have the tools and they can easily do it and then they can just share their link with you. Okay, you've got two or three questions there. Okay. All right. So now uh, the fun is uh, what I'd like for you to do is go up to where you see the eyeball and that's the preview button. Mm -hmm. All right. Scroll down and you can change if you notice I have a certain theme. You can change colors. <laughs> uh, you can do the themes, but and that's just one button. Go ahead and fill out this questionnaire, this survey about three times. It doesn't matter what you put. Um, just go ahead and complete it. Hit submit and then complete it again. Hit submit and do it about three times and I'll try to. So what's my first name? Harry Potter. Okay, let's see what it looks like on your end. All right, so you've got, uh, if you notice uh, where Zaf is, you can see the responses and you see the little number pop up on, the, on your drive. Do you see that? Okay, so go ahead and click on uh, responses. All right, and so what you notice is that it instantly uh, puts it, it summarizes all of my questions. So if you look, I've gotten Uh, when we had the admission and teacher ed celebration, I sent out a link to all the students and then they <coughs> replied on a Google form and that, that was their RSVP. So we had all of their information uh, there. We did a survey of uh, 205 students last or in the spring. Uh, getting to know our teacher candidates, asking them how much they use social media, what do they pull their documents on, and so forth. Uh, but go ahead and look at your responses, and then you saw the summary, but now go ahead and click on the little right hand, the little green, because that's what's most impressive. Oh, yes, go ahead and create a uh, keep, okay, that, that's it, yeah, correct. You just didn't name your form. All right, and so when you see the Mm -hmm. So immediately, all of your data uh, goes into that spreadsheet. Is everybody getting it? Okay. So it is instant. I had a student the other day say, oh, I've known for years about Google Forms. And I went, oh, isn't that great, the magic part? And she goes, oh, I had no idea it went into Sheets. So anytime, then you want to really think about 
What are my questions? What is the information I'm trying to get at? Because again, just like you're in the field, I can instantly have the information. Now, once again, this is how it looks on this. We went into Woodbury Grammar, I think, and had maybe uh, 200 fourth through sixth graders, and we had a cart, and all we did was we brought them in, we uh, put down the iPads, uh, we uh, gave them this uh, survey, they did it, we went out, we hit uh, reset, went into another classroom, and it took us uh, just such easy time to collect a lot of data. Can we change the, uh, the categories and won't do a reverse change? You know what I'm saying? No, I don't think it will. Okay. I, because, um, okay, the form is linked to the spreadsheet, so I have learned this. Say, uh, five people signed up for admission to teacher ed. They didn't use the form, so I wanted them to show on here. So I manually put them in. So then when I went to my summary and wanted to you know, show my pie charts and everything, it didn't pull them up. Now there is a way around it and it's a little more difficult and I had to manually do it. Uh, but now think about your spreadsheet. You can collaborate with this spreadsheet. You can you can, once you have it there, you can change it, in other words, but it won't reverse it to the form. Uh, then you can download it into a Microsoft Excel. So if you're very familiar with Microsoft Excel, then you have some of those features that you might not have in Google Spreadsheet uh, that you uh, would have in Excel. But, but then you could also put it in SPSS if you want to use it for research. Exactly. Exactly, because once you have it in this spreadsheet, and that's why I said you can want to sort, you want to keep them in all the different cells. So if I wanted to sort my males and females, if I wanted to sort the different grade levels, so then it, I want to think ahead of time how the information. How that's I, why you had last name. Exactly, because if you put it both, it's okay, but I always, I learned that years ago in Excel, I just want to break it up as much as possible. What about the number of short answers? Um, like there's a a Likert survey that we use it has nine choices. Mm -hmm. Would do that many? Do you know? I, I would think it would, but I would maybe. I yeah, I would. I would maybe want to think about. The, the, yeah, because again, you're wanting to keep your survey short. You're wanting to make sure that it's not time intensive on, on them. I noticed the forms has sections. <laughs> okay. So you could do sections. You actually could. You could even, if I can find it, um, you can choose your own adventure. You can't hardly see that, but you could create an interactive story. So again, just like Google Slides and all of this, there, it's more than just a couple of questions. Uh, it, it can go a lot of different directions. Uh, and, and I thought this one was really cute. Of course, this uh, covers the ELA standard. So it's using forms to create a story. Exactly. But they click one place and it tells them to go to another. You could create an escape game type uh, form a, format. Something I want to just um, to interject here. Uh, Becky shows you the ISTE standards, the, the Technology for Education standards. Um, and one of the things that we really need to be moving to as we think about integrating technology is students creating. And so that's one of the aspects. So we're thinking about how can our students be using technology to create? So we're thinking about my teacher candidates. Oh, I can have them make a website. I can do this, that, and the other. But then when they're in their own classrooms, they need to be teaching their students how to use technology to create things as well. As, as one aspect, but instead of just to um, uh, be able to use it passively, we want them to use it more actively. That's a huge aspect because I always say in my classes and they just sometimes do not take it away. They've created it and they go, okay, this is really cool. But I say, okay, the next step is getting your students, but uh, they don't feel as comfortable. And so we try to get them to that point. Mm -hmm. Another way to use Google Forms is this is something I just went ahead and created kind of like a cooking show. And I put, okay, I could do how I spent my summer vacation. So I did that in a form. And then of course you can kind of see where all of the responses came up. I did story locations. And then what I did is um, I went into more 
and they now have what they call Google My Maps. Okay, and then I can put that data, I could import from my Google Drive. Technology, oh yeah, I got a folder, man, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> All right, so then I could select, and I could put my name, put maybe location, finish, and then it's going to chart all of those places on my map. So then I can see Jack went to Six Flags and so on. Uh, on a particular time. The other one was a story. So if I were in class, I had a novel and I wanted to talk about the different places that I visited, I could do that. So again, interactive store, we could just create a form and that would be cool enough to collect data or our research purposes. But then it could uh, link to those particular standards that we wanted to cover uh, within our classrooms that would cover the ISTE standards as well as ELA or math and science standards. So I've had a lot of students use SurveyMonkey from time to time, mm -hmm. and of course they need to purchase it or Correct. to have access over a certain number. What parameters are there on this? Do you know? Let's see, we sent it out to four, <coughs> 500 people, the survey. Mm -hmm. So I'll have to check on that, but it's pretty full blown. In other words, you do not have to pay. You can, do you have? To? No, I was just gonna say, if you had sent it to that many people, it yeah. should be, it, yeah. yeah. Do you know about uh, the number of questions you can put on it? How, is there a max length? Don't know that answer. Because obviously we don't send out surveys that have a huge amount, uh, because it, nobody wants more than 50. 15 yeah. questions. But I, I'm thinking that I have seen a lot of surveys and it's been two or, I've done some two or three pages. Uh -huh. So I'm thinking it's going to cut, but I'll get back with you on that. I'll research that. Yeah, Cheryl. Okay, we'll go up at least to 10. There you go. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, good, good, good. Um, all right, so we want to give time for you guys uh, to, to play. Um, it's, it's overwhelming because there's so much, and like anything, like you pick something that you latch onto and you play with it till you feel comfortable. And you know, like if you try something new, and just give yourself time to figure out ways to employ it in your in your context and and showing others, uh, then you can just add another thing and then add another thing. So um, yeah, this this is there's a lot a lot here, but a lot of good stuff. And what we'd like to do is just kind of take the time to come around individually and like maybe show you my D2L or if you want to see any of the other, or you can go to the speaker notes and click on some of those links and revisit some of those websites that some of you said, hey, I want to look at the student websites a little more closely. Uh, this is another uh, site that I'm going to leave you with today and it's so easy to use and I love it. How many of you guys have used this ever before? today's meet. So it's web-based, it's not a Google application, and so go ahead and put that address in, and you can create a room easily web-based. So you just click, how you would do it is you would type in today's meet, but I'm wanting you to go to my particular room, but I'll show you how to create it. And then you just set up and name a room, and then it gives you a choice to say one week, one month, so it could be used as an exit card. So now you can um, type your name. Don't think it takes, I don't think you can use spaces, um, no, with your nickname, I'm not sure. Go ahead and then you can ask a question. Go ahead and join. So yep, you see somebody's already come through. Hi. Again, there's lots of them, poll everywhere and all this, but I like this in particular because it is so easy. No one has to sign up. Uh, again, I can keep that account open for a month, so it doesn't have to be uh, as just a presentation. I could keep the information and then come back to the class with it. It is free. It is free. And so now, if you wanted to, you have to create an account, but then that's it. And then you log in and then you see my the title of my room was Technology Lunch Learn Session. I think I have seen this <coughs> during the presentation where yes. it was off to the side so people could put down questions. 
you know, as the presentation was going on and the presenter could, could look and answer things as they came up. When I go to the technology conference, most of them have this open. And we just all own our phones and we're just throwing those up there, those questions like, hey, this is really cool or we agree with this or we're not sure about this. And so again, you can kind of see everyone and what they're thinking is. This is sort of like a webinar where they have that chat feature on the side. Or whatever. Absolutely. And you can also, I didn't mention in Google Sites or Word or any of that, you have a chat feature if you want to use that as well. So when you're collaborating and you're wanting to think they're not sitting beside each other, somebody may be in France, somebody may be in Murfreesboro, that they can chat to each other while they're creating the document. Another item, and this is the last one, is where it said forms. I've got a link to, uh, and again, you can Google this, but it gives you so many ideas of how to use all of these different forms. Is that the one that just came through? Oh, that, um, I just got this. Just oh, they, they've got, yeah, I mean, you can just Google it. There's 79 form, but that way you can go, okay, I can see all of this. Maybe I haven't thought about how to use them. Oh, I don't like this that it's going. Mm -hmm. So again, you're brainstorming, you try to say, okay, it's not just three questions. You really need to think about. Okay, uh, we've got about 10 minutes or so to play, or 20, 20, okay. So uh, go back through again. You've got this if you want to, or you want to individualize, or you want to check out any of those websites, or any questions that we have, or if you want to actually try to complete a questionnaire on the website and just to see what it feels like.